Hello and welcome to this session everyone. In this session we are going to talk about Amazon VPC. This session is going to be quick introduction to VPC service and the basic concepts. So first of all guys, what is Amazon VPC? VPC stands for Virtual Private Cloud. VPC is one of the fundamental and widely used AWS service which provide a virtual network dedicated for your AWS environment. When I use term dedicated, it means uh, when you create a VPC or the default VPC which automatically gets created, that is a logical component and that's only allocated to you. So VPC is not shared between uh, different customers or different Amazon account. So that's the reason it is dedicated for your network. VPC is logically isolated from the other virtual networks in the cloud and exists only within a single AWS region. So if you go to one VPC in one region, that cannot span in other region. So VPC is dedicated to a region. VPC allows for more granular control of the AWS cloud network with extra layer of security. So it means you will be having more control if you administer VPC. What are the benefits of using a VPC? First of all, you can define your custom network. You can assign static private IPv4 addresses to the instances. You can define network interfaces and attach one or more network interface to the instances. Then another benefit, you can define your routing between different subnets. You can also define internet access for the subnets, means uh, which subnet can access the internet. You can define the network security by allowing or denying the traffic. Basically, you will be having control which particular traffic is allowed, which traffic is restricted or denied. You can control the outbound traffic in addition to inbound traffic using ACL, basically access control list, or you can say network access control list. You can see on screen uh, there are many Amazon services which are integrated with VPC, basically the services which require network connectivity. So they are data pipeline, EC2, auto scaling, elastic beanstalk. Elastic Load Balancing, Elastic Cache, EMR, Oxwork, RDS, Redshift, Route 53, and Workspaces. So next thing guys, uh, there are two types of VPCs. First is Default VPC and second is Custom or you can say Non-Default VPC. Default VPC is automatically created when you create your account or you start using some Amazon services. Default VPC is always created with subnet 172.31.0.0 slash 16 in the region to support the VPC dependent Amazon services. With the default VPC, automatically three subnets get created. If in that particular region there are three availability zones. In case that region got only two availability zone, then you will get two subnets. So based on number of uh, availability zone in that region, those many subnets will be created by default with default VPC. In custom or non-default VPC, when you go to custom requirements such as you don't want to use the default network which 172.31.0.0 or uh, you don't want to stick with default Amazon routing because in default Amazon routing, uh, all the subnets are allowed to access the internet, which basically you don't want in your production setup. In your production setup, you want to segregate or you want to allow only few of the servers to access internet, the rest of the servers you want uh, without internet access. For example, let's say you go to database servers. Database servers you want to keep behind uh, your security groups, basically where uh, the servers will be not having internet access but they will be having basic network capabilities to allow database connectivity and for your web server or internet facing servers you want to allow them to 
get connected through internet or they can access internet basically so in that way that's a custom requirement so you can create your own vpc with your custom configuration and what is the pricing for amazon vpc so guys there is no additional charge for using amazon vpc service you pay the standard rates for the instances and other amazon ec2 features that you use it means uh, the Amazon services which need VPC and you're using those services, you have to only pay for those services. For VPC, nothing to pay. Only thing in case you are using hardware VPN connection, you pay for each hour that VPN is connected to your VPC or whatever the billing model you have agreed with Amazon. So that's the only thing which you have to pay. Next thing comes, what are the Amazon VPC limits? You know, like all other services you got uh, some limits but uh, in case you want to expand your amazon vpc configuration which is beyond your limit you can always call amazon and uh, get your vpc limit uh, expanded that's something you can always do next thing vpc topology as I mentioned, a VPC is specific to an AWS region. Every AZ can have one subnet. All subnets can route to each other by default because that's a default Amazon model. Network size can be set between slash 16 or slash 28 for VPC CIDR. You can choose your own IP prefix. At a time, only one routing table can be associated with this subnet. So these are basically a couple of topologies terms. And let's go to next so here uh, this is the flow of Amazon VPC and let me explain a little bit you can see here this is availability zones like these subnets are basically availability zones and you can consider this is our Amazon region and VPC is created in a region this is the flow of a VPC and here you can see customer can connect using internet here internet gateway basically and this is corporate data center by using vpn gateway so let's consider customer is connecting through internet it will come to internet gateway from internet gateway it will be routed to router then routing table routing table basically decide okay how to route the network then it will go to network access control list then security groups then this is your service let's say this is ec2 instance this is your ec2 or database server in that way connectivity works same thing if you're connecting from your corporate data center maybe like you are using vpn gateway or many times because companies or customers are using direct connect for this purpose so this is very basic diagram to explain how components are coupled together next thing guys uh, what are the main components of vpc the first thing is subnet as i mentioned after creating a VPC, you can add one or more subnets in each availability zone. When you create a subnet, you specify a CIDR block for that particular subnet, which is a subnet of the VPC CIDR block. Based on number of system in that subnet, you can uh, decide uh, whether that's going to be slash 16 or slash 28. That's your requirement. Security group security group basically are state full firewall we know firewall can block or allow traffic whatever the rule defined in that so access to aws instances is restricted by aws firewall which is basically security group you can define in security group what port are open or what port are blocked basically blocking you can't define you can define what ports are open and from where they can be accessed like your service or your ip from which particular source ip addresses it can be accessed you can define a cidr block you can define from anywhere you can define some custom custom network that's up to you then network access control list or NACLs. access control list is additional layer of security and as stateless firewall that allow or block traffic at subnet level next thing route or routing tables a route table contains a set of rules those determines how 
traffic is routed between different subnets. All subnets inside your VPC are attached to the main routing table which automatically gets created when you create VPC. You can associate routing table to a particular subnet and a subnet can be associated with only one route table at a time. Next things, Elastic Network Interfaces or ENI. They are mostly referred as network interfaces. They carry MAC addresses and they can have one or more IP address. In case you are assigning public IP, you can assign one or more public IP. In case uh, that's a private IP, you can again assign one or more private IP. And how many network interfaces or ENIs you can attach to a single instance that depends upon instance type. Like what are the max numbers of uh, supported ENIs on that particular instance type. Next thing, internet gateways. When you want to allow a subnet to communicate with the internet, you can attach that subnet with internet gateway. Basically with that, you allow public access to your instance. Again, uh, you can restrict the access by your security groups, but your instances can go to internet or like they can be accessed from outside of your network. Next thing, customer and virtual private gateway or VPN gateway. When you want to establish connection of your uh, corporate network and Amazon, customer gateway and virtual private gateway are options. The customer gateway is a gateway in your corporate network will be establishing a tunnel to access uh, Amazon network. With the virtual private gateway or VPN, you use VPN and uh, the concentrator sits on edge of the VPC. So this was uh, the basic introduction to VPC and what are the main components. In next video, we will be creating a brand new VPC with custom subnets and uh, we will be creating a couple of EC2 instances to use our new VPC. So please watch next video for getting knowledge on how to create a VPC. You can always refer Amazon documentation if you want more detail because I'm covering only very basic things which are basically for beginners. Thank you guys. If you have any query, any suggestion, just leave a comment on my YouTube channel. Thanks again.